I am from beyond. Listen, and all you desire will be yours. Welcome to Spider-Man and the Secret Wars. Prepare for battle. Welcome to Prattle World. I'm your host, the ever-amazing, ever-spectacular Spider-Dan. And in this podcast, I spotlight entertainment's best-kept secrets that a mainstream audience may find boring. And welcome to another edition of Secret Ball Stories, where I invite guests... When I invite guests? I invite guests to count down a personal top five list in high-fidelity fashion. And we have a long-awaited guest. Many people have waited for this young man to be on this podcast and to finally speak, to have his words heard by the masses. And it is Mr. Scott Hodgson. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling very well, thank you. I'm yes. glad to be here. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm glad, I'm glad to have you. I know I've been I've been I've been waiting for this one. I know I know initially you were a little bit, you know, tentative about doing something like yeah. this. Yeah. Um yeah, I think you, you first asked me about a year, well over a year ago. Yeah, probably about yeah, about that time. Um and I sort of put it off partly because I couldn't really think of a subject to do. Um but also I don't like talking. You don't like talking. I'm not a good talker. Fair enough. Well, I can which make is, up which for is that. a struggle for a podcast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's all audio based. I mean, yeah. even if you were a YouTuber, you would have to do maybe a little talking. Yeah, you know, it's um, still. Yeah, like... I do struggle to to have a good conversation with one. That's it's probably the hardest thing I find. Okay, fair enough. Having a good chat with someone, apart mm. from if the subject is video games, okay, or Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, okay. But. Yeah, so those two subjects I'm quite good on, I think. You know, no offence, but you are very opinionated about those two topics, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And if you get me started on a Star Wars video game, oh, oh. well, I mean, I mean, that's probably a top five list in itself because the Star yeah. Wars video games, like, I love most of them. You know, I don't think there's too many really, really, really bad ones. There's the Jedi Fallen Order that Order that I haven't played yet. Okay, and the new one. Oh, that's the one with. Um, it's supposed uh, to be very, very good. The guy who the it was the Joker in Gotham. That was yeah. him, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. He plays Cal something. I think Cal L. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite. Not quite. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing that. I'm going to cool. wait until it comes on sale. Yeah, it's, it seemed like it sold sold out everywhere, so it yeah. must have been, it must have been quite popular. Yeah, um, it did very well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, we used to play. In fact, speaking of videos, we used to play one of my favourites, um, Jedi Knight Two. That was a great. Yeah, we play. I think we had like. Do we play that on the PlayStation or the Xbox? Um, it might have been GameCube actually. Yeah, I think it might have been GameCube actually. Yeah, um, but yeah. That we used to play multiplayer on that. We Just did. us two and a load of bots. Yeah, because we were we were jumping off Coruscant and, and fall into just our doom. Force push people off the side. Oh, oh. Fantastic force lightning. You know, it just it, it it was the most I felt like a Jedi playing a game. Yeah. Um. You know, this would be in my top five if it wasn't you know more sci-fi than superheroes. I guess. Yeah. It's not based on a comic book. And now are all. Are all your choices so based on a comic book? Kind of bent the rules a little bit. Okay, so fair play. The, the subject is, of course, five video games, our fi- favourite five video games mm-hmm. based on comics. Mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest comic reader in the world. No, fair enough. I, um, I'll make up for that, don't worry. You've tried to get me onto some. You've bought mm. me some as presents. Like yes. You bought me um, an Iron Man uh, yes. compendium, which yes. uh, I've read through. That was very fun. Yeah, that, I think it was a kind of a best of kind of thing, wasn't yeah. it? I believe. Yeah, um, it had the whole alcohol. Oh yeah, demon in a bottle. Yeah, one, um, which I really enjoyed. But so yeah, I'm not not a massive comic book reader. Okay, but most of mine are purely based on how good the video game is, of course. Fair enough. Yeah, but um, some of them. So they all originate from comic books. Yes, originally is my my five. Okay, good, good. Uh, my mine too. Mine. Too. Some of them, you know, which we'll get onto, of course. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. You know, take a lot from other media. medium. Yeah. Okay, that's so, fair enough. I think. But yeah. And uh, I think there's some of mine that have actually impacted other media and further video games and films even yeah. in some respect. But yeah, I, I think like what when you play a comic book video game, what are you what kind of what are you looking for? What do you want to do? You want to feel like that character? Do you want to uh, feel like you you're doing those things and that you are living that life? Is that is that like it's an immersive experience? For yeah, you? I think it well it kind of depends on the comic book game. Like if you're mm. playing a superhero game. Mm. Um, you know, those are the ones you really want to feel really powerful and yeah. have all these super abilities mm. and be able to fly and kill people with one punch and things yeah, like that. You do, but 
that there's some other obviously comic books that aren't superhero based. Yes, true. That are maybe more story based. Okay. Um, okay. And so yeah, it, it, it's finding that the balance, the balance between, yeah. between story and gameplay. Because for games, for me, gameplay is the most important thing, mm. and then second most is story. Yeah. And it's it's hard to find a good balance. And some games are just purely like brilliant for gameplay. Yeah. Um, and then others strike that balance really well. Like, mm. obviously, it's not a comic book no. game, but The Last of Us is yes. probably my favorite game of all time. Really, I really enjoy the gameplay in it, but also the story is just absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, I, remember, I, I I didn't play it, but I remember you playing it. I remember yeah. just watching you get really into it, and the whole. I actually when I did uh, when I did Scarefest. I actually stole the kind of clicker noise. All oh, right, and uh, yeah, that yeah, re- yeah. it was really effect. Yeah, it was really effective. Yeah. It was like a oh, that's, that's such a horrible noise. It's kind of like that, mm. and, it, and I just remember a load of people going, "What the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? It's scared of the shell, man." Um, which is, you know, the crowd you get at Alton Town. It's the type of crowd. Yeah. Um, but it was re- that was like that was kind of me experimenting and being a kind of live zombie and a live scare experience. Yeah. I do recommend if you ever if you ever want to do any like scare acting, I do recommend it because it's it's a whole different world of acting that you've, yeah. you've never experienced. Um, and it's very exciting and experimental for me. Um, I but- do remember doing something similar. So after Resident Evil Four came out, I was at college. And okay. we were doing a play, and there's these there's this sort of like cult religion religious people okay yeah yeah and they make a sound it sounds like they're saying cock hitler <laughs> it's like cock hitler cock hitler cock hitler and i remember there was a play at some point where i was yeah. just wandering around repeating yeah. that same thing which you know i mean i enjoyed cock, cock hitler <laughs> um there you go um I was, I was thinking about another game we played which was which was a superhero game it may may be on your list or maybe on mine who knows um, but it reminded me of um, uh, of and- Andrew Knowles. I know the game, you uh, <laughs> and it's a uh, it's a really good game, and it's uh, an open world superhero game, very good game, mm-hmm. and it's Lego Batman Two, and and Andrew Knowles, who's you know a previous guest on this podcast, and uh, much love, and is, I'm sure he'll be listening to you and your <laughs> your comments and opinions on on certain things. Um, <laughs> he was staying on our floor, and and oh, we much. played this game so much, we completed it 100, percent which is very rare mm-hmm. for me to do on any game. Yeah. Really. And one of the best elements of it was that you could play Superman and Batman mostly throughout the game. And every time you, you'd hear, when you were playing Batman, you'd hear, and then when you took up, took flight as Superman, you'd hear, and, and you would take flight. We would take flight quite a lot. Because and this would be every time you took flight. Yeah, literally yeah. every time. So every time you land, the music would stop. Every time you took flight, yeah. the, it would start from the beginning. So it'd be and John Williams is kicking in, and uh, and Andy's there, and he's like, you know, it's like we, you know, like, me and Scott both like our video games, and we do play them for hours on end on on occasion, and and, and all I can hear in the background is Andy going and just doing the theme because he's so annoyed, so annoyed to the point where we realised it was annoying him and we would just start flying so it would start and then we'd stop for about five seconds and then start again and it would, so it should be the first few beats stop <laughs> and we would do it on purpose we did we, we knew that if you flew as any other character no music no. plays we knew this yeah. we absolutely knew this and you could easily choose another character <laughs> to fly but whenever we went to the character select screen who it was, would you I mean, I mean it's, who wouldn't you want to be you want to be the first and the greatest superhero with yeah. the best theme song <laughs> You know, and that's that is it. Um, anyway, let's get down to brass tacks. So we're talking top five comic book based video games, and because you are the guest, I'm gonna let you go first. Thank you, and I'm gonna choose the one that I'm worried you're gonna choose. Okay, okay. Because I really want this on my list. Fair it's enough. Probably my favourite one. Okay. Well, I, well, I um, thought this was number five. I thought. Oh yeah. Oh, so we have to go, go five. Have you got an order? Have you got a particular? Not we don't have really. To. We don't have to. Um, I've just chosen five that you really, five. really like. Yeah. Okay. Go I've not it. really put them in any order. That's fine. They're That's all fine. good in their own ways. Yeah, I think mine are the same. I, I mean, I've, I've put them in an order, but you know, they're all good. They're oh, all okay. Good. The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Season one. Okay. By Telltale Games. Okay. Was this on your list? This is also my number five. Oh. oh. 
Great minds, great minds, Indeed. thinking alike. So, did you, so this isn't your favourite then? This, um, from your, it's, if you it, were to rank, yeah, I think if I were to rank, it wouldn't be because I, I, I mean, it's it's a comic book based video game, but yeah. I think for me, I'm, I'm, I really love my superheroes. I love, mm. you know, Marvel Universe, DC Universe. So that that's my kind of prep. When I think comic books, that's what I go to. Yeah. H- however, this game, my God, this made me feel things I haven't it, felt. Yeah, for I probably even haven't felt these things for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this is how this is how intense this game is. Tell, yeah. tell us a bit more about it. Um, so it's I guess you call it an adventure style game. Hmm. Um, it's very sort of quite old school um, in terms of like I don't suppose if you remember like Lucas Arts games, kind of point and click, point and click, yeah, games. yeah. Um, and it, it, this is when I was talking about gameplay and story before. Hmm. This is all story. Yeah. The gameplay, I think it's fair to say, isn't great, especially no. nowadays. It's, yeah. I think it was made in 2012, 2013. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I can check. I'll check him first. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, the gameplay, it's very janky, I guess is the word. Janky? There's, what a great word. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of things wrong with it. It doesn't yeah. always work. Um, the controls, I, I well, I originally played it on my iPhone on my iPad. I I played it on my iPhone and destroyed my iPhone because yeah. I played it that much. Because um, I think the first episode was free mm. at one point, so I got the first episode. I then paid uh, to have the second episode, mm. and then I sort of stopped for a while. Um, and it, I think I lost my phone or something. Yeah, so something I happened. never finished it off. And the, I think the second episode wasn't as great as the first. So yeah, I'd agree. It can't because the, the whole the whole game was originally um, released in five separate episodes. Mm. Could, I think they were like four quid each. Yeah, something. something like that. And then they um, do deals for the bundle. Yeah. yeah. So I only got two episodes in when I first played it, and then I recently played it. I think I got it a year ago on yeah. Switch. Yeah. Yeah. And play through the whole thing. It's it's just incredible. Mm. The st- it's the characters. So you play the main guys. This guy called Lee. Mm. Uh, he's on his way to uh, prison. He's yeah, been arrested yeah. for find, murder. Find out later, it's for murder. Yeah. yeah, and then all the whole Walking Dead stuff kicks off. Yeah. So it's not based on the TV series. It is based on the comic. Does I think, does, I think one of the characters turns up? There's a right. couple of characters yeah. right, if I remember. So Glenn. Yes, yeah. that I remember now, yeah. He's in the first episode, and then he goes off to Atlanta, I think it is. Yeah, where, that, yeah that's where the I first that's season, where he meets yeah. Rick Grimes. And yeah, because he's the guy stuff. on the walkie-talkie, isn't he? He goes like, hey, the guy under the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's him, yeah. And also you meet Herschel on his farm. Mm. In, that's in the second episode. Mm. So when I first played it, I hadn't seen any of The Walking Dead and I hadn't read any of the comics. Yeah. I wasn't really involved. But mm-hmm. then since since then, me and Lucy, uh, my girlfriend, we blasted through The Walking Dead like the first yeah. six series, I think. I, I watched the first series, really loved it, and, and I heard the second series was awful. Yeah. And I just never carried it on. And I kind of feel like I have to watch that season now to get to the good mm-hmm. ones. Um, so I've not picked it back up. Uh, Nathan did get me the first volume of the comic, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, but again, I didn't carry that on either. Uh, I'm a big fan of like zombie related stuff. I like, love zombie. You know, it's computer game zombies. They just match together so well. I mean, Resident Evil is just yeah. such a good series. It's, it's a classic. And I think Nazis and zombies were probably almost invented for video games. Yeah. Almost yeah. entirely. <laughs> and then when you slam them together, even better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I totally agree. This, this game is, the, these are some of the hardest choices I've ever made in my life. Yeah. Like, that literally they are you choose you make friends you bond with these people you know all these little decisions actually count there's a lot of games where they're like oh you can yeah. make, choose your side choose this and choose that they don't really matter that much in, mm. in the grand scheme of things it's just like you have a slightly different level with a slightly different boss or something yeah. like that but with these like you lie they remember yeah. you, you pay them a compliment they remember stuff like that so and they will pull you up on that shit later on yeah. and that will affect one of the major decisions you have to make and it's usually between should that guy live and should that guy die yeah. or should that guy die and that guy live you have to make that decision and you've spent hours and hours and you spend hours talking to these people and you 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 engage with them in such an immersive way that it is like, and, and you, and you regret these, some of these decisions you yeah. make. You seriously regret them. Cause, cause some of them are time based. So you have to make mm. a decision really quickly. Mm. And sometimes you'll, you'll regret your decision. Yeah. Like the split second after you've made mm. it, you think, Oh no. I've, yeah. And, and you can't go back on it. No. 
Unless the game crashes. And yeah, maybe it's, it's, like it's save, happened a couple of times. It's a save it? point, yeah. Oh, yeah. it cr- crashed on my phone constantly. It does crash a lot. And like my phone was on fire, I played it that much. It was yeah. red hot. But I remember one specific moment where you're at a farm, you've met this weird family, they're a bit... I think it's second episode, I think. I've not played the other seasons, so I, I can't no, comment I on either. those... Oh, no, I might have played season two, actually, but I don't think it was as memorable. But yeah, I remember and you're locked in a fridge with these guys and one of the guys starts having a heart attack. Yeah. And, and if, like, with The Walking Dead, if you just die, you don't have to be bitten by them. If you just die, you, be, you ra- rise again as yeah. a zombie. So you have this choice. You either give him CPR or you smash his head in with a brick. What did you do? I smashed his head with a brick. <laughs> so, you know, I hated that guy as well. Yeah, he was a bit—he was a bit racist, wasn't he? He was yeah, always a racist. He, and you—you you really do feel for these characters. Yeah. So the the main guy you're playing as, well, the way I played it, I mm. tried to think about how I would act in that situation. Yeah. And normally with a video game, you don't really do—you don't no. think that deeply about no. the things you're doing. But when it's actual choices that are going to have a consequence, mm. you do really start thinking about the choices. Mm. And it, this all affects the relationships and you start to like certain characters yeah. and they will act differently. Like there's some characters that I love that you may have hated because yeah, true. the first time you spoke to them, you picked a different choice exactly, or something yeah. like that. And yeah, it, it's just an incredible game. And yeah. I would say if you haven't played it, definitely. Yeah. Def- I mean, it's, I think it's available on pretty much like, everything. Telltale Games did a lot of these. They did Back to the Future one, which yeah. I, I quite enjoyed. Wasn't as good, obviously, because we're back to, with with the, the established kind of characters and the established things. Because these yeah. characters, they're, they're new characters, so they can do whatever they want with them. Yeah, kill them, make them live, you know, what have you. With like established characters like Guardians of the Galaxy or Batman, you kind of sort yeah. of know how it's going to play this out. Is, this is the only um, Telltale game I've played, so I haven't played the, yeah, the Batman and one. the other ones. Um, but this this game series was so popular. The company went out of business and they still brought the game back to give it a satisfying conclusion. Like that just, yeah. that, and it, it won 80 plus game awards. I looked this up, yeah. 80 plus game awards. It's for those reasons that we've been talking about that it won those awards. And I think they were almost a victim of their own success in a way because mm. this was so well received and it did so well. And it's a fairly cheap game to make, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. And they just decided to try and do everything they could. So Batman, Guardians. Yeah. Any, any license, any other license. Exactly. And they didn't really... Yeah. The, the engine that they're using to make the game, yeah. they didn't really improve, hmm. as far as I know. I heard I heard and, the, Wolf, the Wolf Among Us, which is based on the Fables comic books, yeah. which is a prequel to the Fables comic yeah. books. It's kind of like if fairy tales were real and they had their own part of the city, like a Chinatown type thing. Uh, apparently that was quite good mm. as well. I've not played that one. I've not read any Fables comic books, but I will eventually. But yeah, I've, I've heard that was probably the other better one that was mm. available. All the other ones I've heard, Batman, I've heard Batman was pretty good. I played the first episode, I think. I think I did as well. Yeah, yeah. but again, probably because it was free or something like that. But yeah, I've not played the rest. And I've, yeah, because I've read that there's sort of things you can do, you almost determine how the Joker is, mm. how, how he comes about, and if he does actually become the, the Joker yeah. that we all know and love. Okay. Or so I've not played it, so no. that's not another one I probably need to... Yeah, I give that. I give you a go. You like you like your Batman VR. That's a pretty cool oh, game. So, so maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Spoilers. Um, spoilers. Yeah, um, so if you haven't played, I mean, the ending. Uh, can we go into spoilers? Or? Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. Does the does the end is the ending the right ending depending on the choices? Is it still yeah. the same ending? I'll be on, I'll be honest. I will say this. I've never felt so much like I had a daughter. I know. I was gonna say you really cause than, than playing this game. The, most of the game is you. You find this girl early on, Clementine. Clementine. Yeah. She's the cutest little girl. She's got this little cap. And yeah, it's like a baseball it. hat, and her yeah. hair's all big. And um, and she she just got try. It's that thing of thinking. Oh, if I had a kid. Yeah. And if zombies started coming yeah. to life, what would I do? Mm. And that's what this game is about, yeah. I think. You basically become a, th- a father. Yeah. And, and Scott, if you came for Clementine, I would fucking kill you. <laughs> I would, I, I don't care. She's a digital character, but I will fucking kill you in a split yeah. second. And I think another thing that's great about this game is everyone sees a zombie apocalypse film. Everyone goes, oh, well, I, I and everyone has a plan. Everyone mm. has a like, yeah. you know, let's go to the Winchester, have a pint, you know, <laughs> blow, what till this whole thing blows over. Everyone has a plan or they go, oh, I'd do this. And I think, I think even you said that I'd be, I'd be the one that gets 
bit and wouldn't tell anybody, you know, things like that. I mean, like, we, we all go, yeah, we probably, I don't think I'd last long, so, you know, maybe I don't have the relevant skills. I don't think podcasting is a is a relevant skill in a zombie apocalypse, maybe. Um, but well, Yeah, you could give people tips on I how could. to survive. Yeah, could do, could as do. As long as the internet's still working. Yeah, exactly. If that, well, you know, how long does that last? Yeah. You know, who knows? Who knows what would happen? But yeah, you, you do start, because early on, I, I did try and be sort of like a, a really a grown up mm. uh, and a role model for Clementine, mm. and there's this one decision at the end of I think it's the end of the second episode where you and your group come across this car that's been abandoned. Yes, and I thought, oh, that's brilliant. We can get loads of food and everyone yeah, yeah, like yeah. me because yeah. you know, and everyone starts going for the food, and then Clementine doesn't, and she sort of says, no, we we shouldn't take this food, and it's not right. Mm. And at that point, I thought, ah, oh, God, yeah. If she, if she wasn't there, I would I would have picked right, yeah. grab the food, get get everything we can. But yeah, exactly. because she was there, mm. I sort of said, no, no we, should leave it. we should leave it. I'm, I'm not going to be any part oh, of this. Well, well, I I took the food because I was. Ah. So this is like this is interesting because it's like a it's a moral it's a moral dilemma because you 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 want to raise Clementine right, yeah, even within this world of, yeah. of this bleak bleak world you still want to make sure she has those right foundations she's raised yeah. properly and you know she's respected and you know and she questions what you do constantly yeah. she constantly is is like should we really be doing this how do i do this how do i shoot a gun yeah. you know should i cut my hair so i don't get because grabbed by you, zombies you, you can't teach her right if if you're both dead because you've starved exactly so, so yeah it's, yeah these these are the difficult choices you have to make and they're every single choice in itself is difficult. The guy you, the guy I killed in the fridge when I smashed his head in, mm. the daughter wants revenge. So yeah. everything I'm trying to do, she's constantly trying to stop me doing it and, and help it and in my way. So it gets to the point where I want to kill her now, you yeah. know, and I'm like, oh no, but Clementine, and she'll think it's wrong. And, you know, it is a hard, hard game to get through. I do re- highly recommend it. it's on lots of platforms. It's on uh, iOS, it's on Xbox, it's on. Let me have a look how many platforms. PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, iOS, PlayStation Vita, many, many more. But it is, it's phenomenal. And I just, it's an absolute roller coaster. And I've never been as as engrossed in a zombie-related media as I have been Mm. in this game. I I did cry at the end. Did you? Yeah. Wow. I do remember that. And, you know, Scott is an emotional (laughs) rock. You know, you can't can't get much out of him in in the best of times. I I like the fact at the end of each chapter, it brings up these um, sort of percentages. Oh, yeah. I forgot, yeah. What everyone else playing the game has done. So it would be like, um, oh, you saved this person. Eighty percent of other people who played this game saved yeah. that person. So that's really interesting to see yeah. some of those results. Then a lot of them are just sort of fifty fifty down yeah. the middle. Yeah, so like sixty two percent, or yeah. yeah. And like I'll say, like this person died, but you could have saved this person, that person. Yeah. Um, I played another game I really liked, which is kind of very choice related. Is Until Dawn. Have you played that? I have. I've not yeah. finished it. Oh, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's I really, really want to play that with Lucy. Yeah, it's sort of both of us playing it together. Where I've I've seen that um, Detroit, the robot one. We've got that as well. Is that, on, is that, on, was, that was free on oh, was PS it? Plus. It's on sale now for about tenner. Yeah. And and after talking about this, I might I might delve into it. Or I might buy the whole set of Walking Dead stuff. Yeah. Um I've heard the other ones aren't as good, which mm. is put because when I finished this one, knowing that the others haven't got as good reviews, yeah. I was like, I, I'm quite happy to end it yeah. there. That was a fully rounded story. Yeah, I think so. But then there was a little post credit scene mm. when at the end where you Oh, well, I'm not going to spoil anything. No, but go on, let's, you, let's, let's, you sort of see something yeah. that you think is that you sort of see two people, right? Yes, and you yeah, kind yeah, of you remember, wonder yeah. is that two people I've met before? Yeah, and is, is it somebody I've wronged? Yeah. Is it somebody I've you know saved? Yeah, and and what could that mean for the the future and that person that is left behind? Yeah, so I, I might yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like you yeah. said. This is all about story. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think we should spoil the story, no matter no. what the ending is I, or yeah. the choice. Like we've made these choices, you might make a totally different choice given that situation. Yeah. So great, we have the they have the same one. Fantastic. So that saves time, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's go back to you again, since I've talked. We both talked about oh, yours really? and mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> or do you want? Or would you like me to go? Yeah, if, if you. I, okay, I'll, I'll do my four. Your, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do my number four. So my number four 
is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Ah. So this was the precursor to this game was the X Men Legends series, which is a uh, an RPG where you would upgrade and level up and have your powers kind of uh, working in tandem with the other characters. Uh, and you would go through various locales like you know a Sentinel factory, Asteroid M, the Savage Land, all these kind of different areas. And and I think in every game they kind of slightly improved it. Like mm. initially it was like cell shaded graphics so it was very much in line with the comics and stuff um and it was a lot of fun the second one was the rise of apocalypse um there was like a you know you could play as the villains as well you could play as the brotherhood of evil mutants you know yeah. saber tooth or magneto so it was kind of improving all the way and the voice acting was stellar really good um introduced us to kind of steve bloom who's one of my favorite voice actors for wolverine he's phenomenal and but i think marvel legends for me uh, sorry, Marvel Legends. Yeah. Marvel Ultimate Alliance is is the the pinnacle. It's yeah. just it is a whistle stop tour of the Marvel universe. So is this the first one? You're yeah, the first yeah. one. Not the the second one had a kind of Civil War element, which I didn't. We played that one together. Yeah, I think, I think we played that one together. It, it was it was okay, but again, it was kind of restrictive because you had to choose between two sides, yeah. and some of the characters weren't available, which is kind of a bit annoying. And you'd have a slightly different boss in one. You'd fight Goliath, or in one you'd fight Yellow Jacket, for example, because they're both yeah. giant characters but this one for me was really interesting it's bad guy number one bad guy is dr doom the whole premise of the story is dr doom is trying to steal odin's odin force so basically godlike abilities he can mm-hmm. reshape reality do what he wants that's his gain and he teams up with loki um he teams up with ultron and baron mordo and and various enchantress as well lots of other kind of characters and he manages to succeed and he kind of remakes his world into like a doom world like stark industries becomes like doom industries and there's all these like green iron men and stuff yeah. um the gameplay is really really good because it allowed you to switch between the characters almost instantly so you can be iron man one second and no no i want to be thor no i want to be uh, i want to be spider-man no i want to be captain america is it four, pl- you, you four player your, four characters four characters then, however yeah. you can you can straight away pause mm-hmm. the game and go no i want to be doctor strange now no i want to no, be daredevil yeah. no i want to be moon knight no i want to be blade you know it, it gave you such a, a nice roster of of random characters characters as well. You get all, all the big hitters, all the heavy hitters. You had people like you had all the Fantastic Four for a start. You had uh, majority of the X Men, Storm, Wolverine, things like that. And again, you had these more weirder kind of obscure characters like Moon Knight and Blade, mm. uh, Ghost Rider. So it gave you a real kind of uh, breadth of the Marvel universe. And their powers are so varied. So you'd have these kind of radial powers, uh, they'll be chargeable powers, more defensive powers, and also multiple outfits. You had like four different outfits that yeah. had different kind of bonus um, abilities as well. Plays Nick Fury after you completed the game as well, mm. and and you can play as like War Machine version of Iron Man, or you can play as the the uh, ultimate Nick Fury or the original Nick Fury. Was the first one where you could uh, do you could combo powers with another? No, in that fact, that one? was the second one. Right. A bit like uh, there was a bit where in Avengers, in fact, in the second Marvel Ultimate Alliance, there's a bit where Iron Man will shoot repulsor beams at Captain yeah. America's shield and reflect off them and hit That's the enemies. That's what I remember from the second one. There you yeah. go. Um, I've got another video game that does a similar thing later oh, on. Okay. Um, but this was really good. I mean, you go you go literally everywhere and you talk to all the characters. You you visit the Shi'ar universe. You visit the Skrull homeworld. The Skrull homeworld at the time is being eaten by Galactus as well. Of course. Amazing. Which happened in the comics as well. And I think it was written by a comic book writer. But the gameplay is just fun and it's it's quite mm. addictive as well. It's, it is a bit, you know, repetitive. Yeah, that's sort of punchy, punchy. There's loads of yeah, you know, enemies, swarming that, enemies, and then yeah. you'd have a boss fight. But the boss fights were all very unique, and they all had their own kind of thing going on. Like there's one with Loki, who Loki possesses the armor of the Destroyer, and you have to kind of attack Loki mm. in order to beat the Destroyer because the, the Destroyer is effectively just an invincible war machine. And it's really fun, and it, and it made me fall in love. Like I'd never really touched Thor in in, in the comic book world. I'd never really kind of appreciated him. I'm going, oh, he's like Superman. He's mm. dull. He's just this strong man. And I never really kind of invested myself in that universe. Yeah. But because it was so Thor centric, the storyline with Odin, and you spend a lot of time in Asgard with you know a lot of his villains and and supporting characters, all these kind of relatives and gods and stuff. It made me really get into that. And like you said, like we said about the Walking Dead, it was more the story mm. than the gameplay. But the the you know the fact I can just change up every time I go. Okay, I'm just going to play as you know Doctor Strange now. I'm going to play as the Scarlet Witch. I'm yeah. going to play as the Invisible Woman. I'm going to play as Psylocke, um, Storm, whoever, you know, and I, I just like that I had, I could, I, it's just, it was like. 
like a toy chest. Yeah. You know, you there's could... so many different characters with all the... different abilities. Exactly. And there's like 30 characters or something yeah. ridiculous. Like the most recent ones come out on the Nintendo Switch. I've not played I'm... it. Well, I'm, th- I'm, I'm going to get, get it at some point. Yeah? I'll invite you around. Oh, like I'd a love that. Bit of two player action. I would yeah. absolutely adore that. But there's a lot of kind of, and there's, that's probably the biggest roster I've seen of, of video yeah. game characters. And they've even got rare characters like Elsa Bloodstones in there, which mm. is kind of like a Buffy Monster Hunter type character, which is pretty cool. But um, but I loved it. I just I just thought it was everything I wanted from a Marvel video game. I played it and played it and played it to death, and I loved it. The voice acting was good. The, the cutscenes beautiful as well. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Like if you made it an animated film or a series out of that I would watch the living shit out of it it was gorgeous and um, and it's fun and you get to play as all your favourite characters in all in, in the, the best way possible and you visit all the great locales Sanctum Sanctorum Doctor Strange you can stay there for a bit it's just it's wonderful you visit the Watcher's home on the blue area of the moon yeah. um, you you name it. all these places nobody will give a fuck about yeah. uh, <laughs> but I love all these kind of comic book easter eggs uh, yeah I, I went eh, but yeah. I, I don't know what I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about is that where Stan Lee is in one of the cameos yes technically I think he is yeah. He's, yeah he's but, talking to some well yeah. technically in the in the blue area of the moon that's where the phoenix died in the comics as well because it has um, oh, okay. it's got a breathable atmosphere because aliens kind of lived there at one point so mm. it's got a weird kind of thing uh, which I once thought was a real place <laughs> it, it, my dad informed me it wasn't um, yeah. but anyway um, but yeah again for me it, it was yeah it was very much like you know very much punchy punchy power power punchy punchy power power mm. but the I also like the unique interactions so if you knew if you know your comics if you made you know Daredevil talk to Electra, yeah they would have a unique bit of dialogue, which would be like, oh, these characters know each other. Yeah. Or, you know, or like, yeah. So I'd, I'd try and pick, like, the Human Torch talks to Crystal, his ex-girlfriend. What do they say to each other? They don't say anything. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know, it's just generic kind of, you know, dialogue where you don't hear the voice actors say yeah. anything. But it is a fun game. Unfortunately, it's left... I was going to buy it on the PlayStation, but it's left the PlayStation now. I think the rights... Uh, mm. fell out of favour with Activision or whoever created it. Um, okay. So you can't download it anymore. So it's probably quite expensive to buy. But I guess, you know, maybe it's maybe one day it'll be available on Switch yeah. or maybe... I mean, the third one, if it's fun, I'm more than happy to play that and I might even get yeah. Switch just to play that. Mm. My friend just bought... Um, Dan Keatus, another guest on the show, just bought a PlayStation purely to play the new Spider-Man. But yes, um, but yeah, I love that one. It's great. I don't know, do you play it at all? Did you manage to play a bit of it? Not or? the first one. No. I mean, I'll play the second one. One, but um, yeah, with you, yeah, uh, really enjoyed it, and yeah, I, I do want to play the third, yeah, one. The third especially one was... now knowing a lot more about the Marvel universe. Exactly, I think yeah. when we played the second one, um, I really enjoyed playing as Doctor Strange. Yeah, and that was the first time you kind of seen it. I kind of began to learn who he is. Because I think mm. when we were playing, you would. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, he does this. Yeah, and you'd go into a whole yeah. load of all his And, and you'd be, and you'd be and like, can I just play this game, please? And then, uh, <laughs> and then I think we ended up watching, um, a. Was it the animated, animated movie? Animated movie. Which is really good. It's really, really and good. And it's not too dissimilar from the actual no. film that came out. No. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then I, I, so I think it's a good way of, Learning a lot about the Marvel Universe if you're not yeah. massively into reading a lot. Of exactly, yeah. And there's a lot of, there is a lot but of. you enjoy it. I, I enjoyed it because of, you know, it's, it's a love letter to the Marvel Universe, but it is a good, it's a nice gateway drug. Yeah. And this was back in like 2005, mm. I want to say something like that. So this is way before we were getting kind of the movies and yeah. stuff. Um, well, yeah, 2006, in fact. So, yeah. so we've had Marvel movies, but we've not had like the MCU movies yeah. at this point. But this is what I kind of dreamed about playing for, for so many years. Like when I was playing with my action figures and <laughs> everything was crossing over and, you know, they're helping each other, you know, and all that. This is, this was the dream come true for yeah. me. And I played it day in, day out, hours and hours till three in the morning, till the sun was coming up. And I'm going, I need to go to bed. I've got school. <laughs> um, so no, college, I guess I would have been at college at that time. But yeah, so that was uh, that was definitely one of my favourites. But enough gushing about Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Let's mm. move on to your number four. Um, well, we're going to move on to another member of the Marvel Universe. Ooh. I think this may... I reckon this is in your list. Okay, let's we'll see. Let's see. Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. Yeah. It's not in my it's list. It's not at all. No, because I, I thought you might have it. So I, oh, I, very good. I moved away. So th- this is where the sort of rules of, uh, of the whole picking, because it's not really based on the comic, it's based on Spider-Man 2, the film. Okay. But well, of course that is based I'll, on... I'll give, you, I'll give you that it is loose, it's quite loosely based on the film. There's a lot more in, in 
like there's a lot more enemies and characters. Yeah, so you've got Mysterio's in there, yeah. Shocker, Rhino. Rhino Scorpion, I think. I yeah. think Scorpion turns up. Black Cat's in it, definitely. So it goes into a lot more yeah. than obviously the film does. Yes. So, but but why, I, yeah. why Spider-Man 2? This is probably... It, it's a massive open world superhero game. Yeah. And it was probably the first one I remember playing. So you, you just get a sense of what New York City is because you can pretty much go anywhere on this island and you're Spider-Man. And that sensation of just swinging through the building, swinging, swinging through Manhattan, it, was, it, it did it so well. That it was so much fun to be Spider-Man in that game. And I haven't played it since I originally played it, which mm. would have been back in 2000 four or something mm. like that but it is such a fun game to play um and it, it was mainly because it was the first open world game that i really played mm. and just played so much of mm. these days it's probably not going to hold up as well no. especially against the ps4 Spider-Man yes yeah I would, I would ag- i would agree a yeah. while ago and the only reason i haven't got that one on my list is mm. i haven't played it yet fair enough fair so enough. i think if i had played that mm. then that would probably be I would recommend, I, re- I absolutely recommend the new one because I think, I think the problem with Spider-Man 2 for me was, I mean, at the time, loved it. I found, uh, the, the web swinging mechanics were, were revolutionary mm-hmm. because like the Spider-Man movie game before that, you were just up and down, you know, on and hanging. There was sort of like a fog above the road, so yeah. you could never actually land on, on anything. The, yeah, it gave it, gave, it did give you the scent. Like it was, they were very much kind of buttoned in, mm-hmm. um, and you know, there was a there was a form to the levels. It wasn't open world, but it gave you the kind of almost the illusion of having an open world. Yeah. Those Spider-Man, those first few Spider-Man games. The problem I had with Spider-Man Two was the combat wasn't amazing it wasn't it yeah. really wasn't and the problem also was when you got to like obviously there's a lot of like street crimes that happen mm. and once you do so many street crimes or get so far in the game all the street crimes become these massive armored bastards yeah and they're bloody hard to beat really hard to beat and you're like you're, and you kind of you can ignore the crimes yeah so, so they are sort of like side missions yeah the side missions you don't are, really have to do no there's the, the, I did quite enjoy the pizza missions they, they were really fun <laughs> they were I did and it, the, I think so, they had some sort of weird music going on at the same time it's like some or, sort of Italian kind yeah. of yeah something I remember if you did a back if you did like a, a double jump like a forward flip you would damage the pizza. the pizza. <laughs> yeah, so you wouldn't get as much money for it or something. Yeah, you wouldn't get as much. And it, I think and you, you could lose time as well, possibly, oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, was, it was like one of those kind of little challenges. One of the best bits about it for me was that Bruce Campbell... I was going to say. It's, <laughs> oh, and the way he did it, so he does the... Narration, tutorial. tutorial. And, yeah. And, yeah, he's absolutely brilliant. I liked how he pronounced... Uh, I liked how he pronounced boys as well, because there's, there's all these boys, you know, in the water outside of New York. And you have to kind of like uh, web zip to them or jump right. to them, and he was like, um, "Jump to the buoy," and I was like, "The what? Yeah. Buoy? Is that?" I, how you I thought you were talking about oh, there's a group of boys. Yeah, so yeah, get that, get that buoy. Yeah, right. drown the buoy. Oh, yeah. right. Right. Okay. But no, he was like, yeah. he was like, no, he was like the boys, uh, you know, on the bu- the Boo- buoys, yeah. as, as he described that. I was just like, "What is he saying?" I have no idea what a buoy is, and yeah. I was like. Oh, just been a boy, <laughs> right? Okay, I get it now. And but he, he was brilliant. The rest of the voice acting, uh, yeah, it was, it was Toby Maguire. It was Toby Maguire. I think Alfred Molina might have come back. Possibly, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I'd have to, I'd but, have to go back and listen. But yeah, it was definitely Toby Maguire. But he's a bit flat. I, I never liked him as Spider Man anyway. No. And yeah, his his voiceover wasn't great. Yeah, it just sounds like he didn't really want to be there. Yeah, it's, it's a contractual thing. Yeah. And like, we have to think about this, like, like video games that are based on movies are often quite shit. Especially, this was one of the earliest ones that was mm. actually very good. Mm. Um, it's very surprising. Yeah. And it, that, especially in the sort of early 2000s, I'd say, there were so mm. many crappy games. Oh, yeah. Based on... I mean, even the, the first Iron Man Is not game, great, no. I, I remember That's playing honest, it on a Wii. The se- well, I'm glad you didn't play the second one, because that was yeah. even worse. I, I said, oh, it's really cheap, I'll get the second one. I was like, that's even worse. Yeah. Like, the first one, at least it kind of had a bit of something to it. But I was, co- I remember the first Iron Man game was, you're just constantly being attacked, constantly. You never, like... There's never a moment where you're not being attacked. Yeah. And it's just annoying. 
but yeah, I, I do get it. No, but the, the, this game, it does get a bit repetitive with the side missions, especially. I mean, the amount of kids balloons oh, must have saved. God, yeah. Some little whiny kid <laughs> complaining to his mum because he's too stupid enough to hold onto a balloon, mm. and then I've got to go and rescue this balloon and bring it back to him when there's all this other crime going on. Mm. But yeah, but. It, it was a very fun game for its time. Well, and... well, it, when you get the new Spider-Man, you've got a very similar mission. Oh, no. And I'm pretty sure the guy who voices the guy who gives you the mission, I won't, I won't tell you what it is, yeah. but uh, I'm pretty sure he's, the, he's Lee from Walking Dead. It's the same voice. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But it's probably the most annoying bit of the game. Uh, but it is a little kind of side mission that you can do. Or, or um, yeah. I think, I'm not sure if you get a bonus for doing it. You get like points and upgrade points, but I don't mm. think you get anything special for doing it. Yeah. You do get like a little voice message from him going, thank you for doing what you did. <laughs> don't spoil it for Scott. He's yeah, he's going to enjoy this mission. Yeah. He's going to have a lot of fun. It's a very uh, similar, uh, it's a very similar thing that you yeah. have to chase. It's an airborne thing that you have to chase, basically. Right, okay. So I, I won't ruin it though. The, the, the favourite moment for me in this game and I'm sure everyone who played this game did the same thing early on as mm. soon as you're let loose in the city mm-hmm. you climb to the top of the tallest building yeah. and jump off uh, at this point it would have been the Empire State Building yeah. um, in the game and that's exactly what I said I said Sophie my sister I was like do you want to play Spider-Man yeah First thing she did. Yeah. Literally the first thing she did. I'm going to kill myself. Yay! <laughs> Don't know how old she was. She must have been, what was I, like 2004 or something. It must have been, she must have been like 10 or 11 or something. Yeah. So that was the first thing she did. Murder! <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the first thing. One of my favourite bits in the game, actually, is this... Um, so obviously the Mysterio's in it and you don't know who Mysterio is uh, and he, he's made out to be like an alien like yeah. an invading alien which I thought was really cool and it's very much like those classic 1950s kind of horror movies and like the aliens are invading that sort of thing and then you know he's got all these um, machines around the statue trying to get up the Statue of Liberty trying to swing up the Statue of Liberty <laughs> This that's when the, the swinging mechanics kind of let you down like yeah. the reality of the gravity and- it, it's sort of halfway between oh, you have to have something to swing on to yeah, but also that doesn't always work Do out. It, no. and I think there's a helicopter that you can. That's right. You hang on to the yeah. You have to hang on to the helicopter, and, and sometimes they take you to the Statue of Liberty, yeah. or sometimes they don't. But then, but then you had to sw- you had to get your pendulum because it's like a pendulum. You had to get the kind mm. of momentum to swing up, release it on the kind of apex of your swing, yeah. and jump up. And and going up the Statue of Liberty, trying to do that with all these machines buzzing around, took me forever. Um, but there's a really good bit after that. There's these huge. There's one in like a, a big movie theater that you have this big fire. There's loads of machines and stuff. And then you find Mysterio in this supermarket, like this kind of like you know Tesco Express type place. And and you're like, what's he doing here? And he's like, I am Mysterio. I will defeat you. <laughs> Fear me and my awesome powers. You punch him. He's got this huge health bar. It's like two or three you know like layers of health bar you're yeah. like oh shit this is going to be a horrible big fight you punch him all health bars jump down immediately and he, his helmet falls off and goes no <laughs> no you beat me Spider-Man and I just thought that was a really way of kind of undercutting the tension and yeah. a really nice bit of humour to it because that's what I like about Mysterio I like that he's a he's a fraud he's a charlatan you know he's this great actor this great kind of producer of movies and all this stuff and it was just very inky with the character and I loved it I, I love that particular thing in games where you think you're going to have a massive boss fight and then they just pull the rug under you. Yeah. Because there's another one in Arkham Origins. Okay, yeah. Where, um, I can't remember what he's called. He's like, um, he's not the shocker, obviously, but it's something uh, like, Is it the um, elect- electrocutioner? Electrocutioner, that's yeah. it. So you, you're in this sort of arena and mm-hmm. then you think, he's, so he's got almost like, you know, shocking yeah, yeah. gloves. Yeah, basically. Elect- yeah, he's got electrical gloves yeah. and stuff, yeah. And you think it's going to be this big fight and then you end up just... Kicking him in the face once. <laughs> that's it. That's it. There we go. That's it. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, that's the one Batman game I haven't played, actually. That's the oh, one, right, the right. one I haven't played. It's, uh, it's good. It's, yeah. it's not as bad as some people say. Yeah, a lot of people like... It's, obviously, it's, it's not produced by Rocksteady, who no. did the other three. Uh, um, so I think it was uh, some Canadian... Um, yeah, too. Who I think are bringing out another Batman game. Really? Actually. Okay. Um, based on the uh, the crow, uh, crows, is it crows? Uh, the, court so, of, the Court of Owls. The Court of Owls. Right, yeah. then, okay. I think that's the rumour that they're going to bring out another game. Okay, um, that's cool. Because, of course, Rocksteady, who... Mm. They were the main ones who made. I do. I do if you're going to read a, a recent Batman story, I definitely, I definitely recommend Court of Owls. Yeah, it's really, really, it's it's sick. Yeah. Um, it's amazing artwork, amazing writing, just really, really good. If you want to get back into Batman comics, 
start with that. There's a lot of it about sort of the secrecy of who these people are. Yeah, there's kind of uh, it's kind of like they're the backbone of Gotham. They're mm. they're the kind of elite. This kind of elite group of kind of you know rich rich people, but this yeah. kind of a secret sect of kind of undead warriors and things like that. And then the, it's almost like they were the, like a lethal Batman before um, before he came to Gotham, you know, they, they've been running things behind the shadows, kind of like a League of Assassins, yeah. um, you know, League of Shadows, Rachel Ghoul type thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, th- I think that would be a good idea for a game, to be honest. I, yeah. I think The Court of Owls would be really good for a movie as well, I think, mm. you know. Given the, t- the current political climate, <laughs> I think The Court of Owls would, would fit in very yeah. nicely. But, um, you know, films tend not to make a lot of political statements. But, uh, but I, like a, I like the odd one now and again. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so Spider-Man 2. So, yeah. Anything, probably, anything else? Probably seen? not aged so well. No, I think I think there's been I think it did set the standard for the open world yeah. and the, and the web mechanics because I actually if you do go back to that open world, it's not as great as you think. It's, no. There's a lot of buildings and not much else. Yeah, going on there's like you can't, a lot of cars driving yeah. in a certain way. Yeah, a and lot you can't taxis. There's not as much but, interaction as you can have yeah. with the people, or there's not places you can go inside of, or you know, there's a lot of stuff kind of wrong with it, but. Yeah. But um, I think they have... For nostalgia. For nostalgia. Don't worry, I've got... I haven't played it since it came out. Fair enough. And I'm not going to, and I don't suggest anyone. (laughs) But it's a great game. But it was good at the time, and it's it's important. It is an important stepping stone in Spider-Man games. So, so yes. Um, So, yes. Well, I'm going to talk about... I'm going to later talk about one, uh, another Spider-Man game. And uh, for the same reasons of nostalgia. Um, Okay, my next one. So, this will be my number three. So, I'm going to talk The Incredible Hulk... Ultimate Destruction. Ah. So this is a game that came shortly after the um, the original one that was based on the movie. So it was an, uh, mm. a Hulk based game, and it was kind of there were stealth elements with Bruce Banner. Uh, I think it was voiced by Eric Banner and had a lot of his kind of uh, comic book villains in. Uh, so and there was say the movie, the, the Eric the, Banner. Yeah, the Eric Banner ha- Angley yeah, two thousand three Hulk movie. I want to yeah, say. Exactly. So this is kind of a pseudo sequel to that. So yeah. um, so it's written by actually one of my favourite. Um, Hulk writers, an English guy called Paul Jenkins, um, and he introduced a lot of cool elements to um, to the Hulk and his characters and his, his kind of universe. He actually gave um, Bruce Banner Lou Gehrig's disease, really odd kind of thing, but it kind of it kind of was quite interesting because he was suffering, but the and he was like they were like this is going to kill you, like they're saying you're gonna you're definitely going to die, Bruce. And he goes, mm. you think the Hulk will let me die? <laughs> That's not going to happen. The Hulk yeah. will never let me die. He, he's a bastard, <laughs> um, and uh, and what's really cool is he kind of came in, but he came in and out of different Hulks. So he he had there's a Professor Hulk, which is kind of a combination of all the Hulk personas. Kind of what Endgame. happened in Endgame, yeah. So yeah, but... well, I'd argue that I'd argue with with Endgame, it was more that he's a Bruce Banner controlled Hulk. With with the Professor Hulk, he's not exactly Bruce Banner. He's right. kind of a mix of all. Because like the, he says this in that comic book story, he goes, "Bruce Banner's right-handed. You're not Bruce Banner." You're yeah. left-handed, so he goes. So you're definitely not Bruce. You're another. You're another split personality that he has. Oh, so wow. which is quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and also there's like the Grey Hulk he becomes as well, who's kind of the smart, kind of uh, the Las Vegas kind of mobster Hulk, if you will, which was a, a very interesting time in a Hulk's career and probably one of my favourites, in fact. Um, but anyway, this this is another open world game. So you get two open worlds to choose from in this. You get the New Mexico kind of desert where the Hulk was born and he's always kind of drawn back to. Um, and you also get like New York City, basically, approximation mm-hmm. of New York City. Um, and it allowed, now we were talking about Spider-Man 2 just then. We were talking about the, the, the web swinging mechanics. Yeah. The leaping mechanics in this are just as good. You can bet you can continually bound, do a massive charge up jump. And you can continually just bounce off the momentum of that. Yeah. And you can continually just bounce. Then you can like drop a massive elbow on a big kind of mech suit or you can, you know, um, the, the amount of stuff and the amount of play you could have was incredible. You can run up the walls. You can like boom, 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 bound up these walls and then leap off the top. You could bring down skyscrapers. You can bring down buildings. You can take a wrecking ball and start swinging it around, hitting helicopters with it. You can take a car or a lorry and turn it into a skateboard. So you're careening down the street on this kind of skateboard. You can take a car and turn it into two boxing gloves, which 
is in the Incredible Hulk it, MCU yeah. movie. I do remember a bit about this game. I never played it. Mm. Was it on the sort of Game GameCube, Cube, PlayStation, yeah. and Xbox? The kind of the standard kind of ones around yeah. 2006, I think it was. But it was um, it was really good. It featured a lot of the villains. Ron Perlman, in fact, plays the main villain in it. Is is a and kind of a new iteration on the Abomination, yeah. uh, which is the villain in the Incredible Hulk film yeah. as well. And he's basically he's he, Paul Jenkins pulls a lot from another character out in the comics called. Um, Oh, General such and such. Oh, I can't remember his name. Look up Hulk, Incredible Hulk, Dogs of War. He's in that. So he basically, his, his wife is ill with cancer mm. and he thinks that gamma radiation is the key to curing her. Yeah, right. So he's constantly bombarding with gamma radiation, but yeah. he needs the Hulk's blood or the Hulk to examine the Hulk to do this. Um, and he in fact gets infected with, you know, gamma radiation starts becoming Slow, slowly but surely becomes the abomination mm. um, and he becomes like a massive abomination at the end where you have to defeat him um, but it also introduced a lot of other interesting things like you've got Thunderbolt Ross in there Doc Samson yeah. um, a lot of kind of main kind of big stay Hulk characters another character from Paul Jenkins run on the comic they introduced was the Devil Hulk which is basically a kind of the most evil Hulk you could think of, which is somewhat kind of related to his father because his father was an abusive dad right. and he killed his mum, slapped him around, called him a little monster, and then Bruce Banner effectively killed him. Interestingly, one of the Hulk's powers, you might not know this, is that he can see ghosts. Ah, no, I never knew that. He can see ghosts, and that's why he can see Doctor Strange's um, astral form. Ah. Um, the reason for this is because he was abused by his dad so much and he knows that he died, he's worried that his dad's ghost will come back and haunt him. So he wants to be aware that his his ghost is going to come back and get him. He wants oh, to wow. see it coming. So, yeah, because he was such an abusive dad. Do you think there's any link between Endgame and... So obviously Hulk's the one, or Banner's yeah. the one who goes to see the Sorcerer Supreme. Possibly. In the comics, it was the Silver Surfer, in fact, that crashed through crashed through the Sanctum Sanctorum and said, Thanos is coming. Oh, right. So I think they kind of they kind of changed it because, you know, Hulk was in the sky. Yeah. You know, same sort of thing. But um and they hadn't introduced the Silver Surfer. Mm. There's a lot of characters that didn't use like Adam Warlock as well. But um they kind of kind of approximated that sort of stuff. Um but this is a really fun game. You can you can do a lot you can pick up the missile launcher from a from a tank and you can pull the missiles out mm. and you can bite the tip of the missile off and spit it out oh, of them. Amazing. Or you can throw the missile at them. The amount of fun you could have and you can pick up soldiers you can punch them slap them around throw them but if you picked up a civilian you, you could only pick up the civilian and then you would put them down and you would pat them on the head <laughs> you're like not gonna hurt you even but it was so much fun like you talk about spider-man and becoming spider-man i felt like the hulk and it and it you didn't have to do much missions you could just go around smashing shit again yeah. side quests and various other things and upgrades you can bring down helicopters you can bring down tanks you can bring those huge armored mechs and everything it was just a boatload of fun and and for me like one of the best open world games and it's, i've never felt more like the hulk than playing this game i've never you know you know when you you're you know when you're really pissed off yeah. and you want to you want to just like you want to you know you punch people, a pillow punch a wall punch, you know people damage things in their own house they yeah. smash things up i never kind of get to that point no. luckily i'm not that mad usually or even if i am i'm going no i quite like that <laughs> i shouldn't <laughs> smash it um what, i really find it really weird when people say they've thrown their controller against yeah. the wall and broken it mm. i've never got to that point yeah, because I know how much these controls yeah, exactly. cost. When I, was, when I was a kid, I did punch the TV once, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a couple of times. I think it was like a wrestling game, a very like frustrating, yeah. frustrating wrestling game. But um, but yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, I don't know if it's available for purchasing or download It'll anymore. Be on eBay somewhere. Yeah, probably. probably. I, you, I reckon. I think you've convinced me. I might try and get it. It is. Oh, it's it's a lot of fun. GameCube. So. Hey, well, if it's yeah, if it's GameCube, definitely yeah. go for it. I'm, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, and you know you complete the game you get a few kind of alternate costumes I think one of my favourite things about the, the comic book video games is alternate costumes yeah like you, that you've because some of these characters even if they only worn it for an issue it's mm. technically you know an alternate costume I remember like Spider-Man 2 Rise of Electra had like had like the Phoenix Spider-Man because he was it became like the Phoenix for a portion of time yeah very weird but they included it because it's a bit unique a bit different is it a thing in video games I've never really understood is alternate costumes yeah yeah. No? I've never been that fussed 
No. And especially when you have to pay for them. On oh yeah, I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't pay for them. No, I'm not. But I'm not even, paying for them. even when they're sort of you know upgrade Un- unlockable, or unlockables. Yeah. yeah, I've never really been that well, fast. Well, you might like you might like the Spider-Man ones because the Spider-Man ones come with, in the new PS4 one. They come with unique powers, like uh, special yeah. powers. So so you might want to just get all the powers to know which one you really like. And yeah. even, even if you and you can you can have the power on a different costume once you oh, okay. once you get the power. So if you prefer like. The regular Spider-Man costume, you can just move that power across. Oh, that's good. So, so it, it, there's a somewhat of a benefit to doing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there was the the nice element is um, you can play as Bruce Banner, the Abomination, or you can play as the Joe Fixit Hulk, which is the Las Vegas leg breaker mobs, mobster bouncer type. He has yeah. a hat and a blue suit, you know, pimp suit basically. Um, and and he has it. The Joe Fixit Hulk has his own dialogue because he speaks. He's like. He can, yeah. He's like a regular Joe, literally, um, and he's just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash you," and stuff like that. He kind of talks a bit like the thing, but he's a bit more mean. He's a bit more like foul tempered. But a really good game. It's it's so much fun. There's so much. Um, there's upgrade abilities, and you know, just the amount of stuff you can do. Even if you're not doing a mission, you can have a great time with this game. So definitely, if you can seek it out, if you haven't already played it, go find it. Cause I, I bloody love it. Yeah. Oh, I'll get it. Right. Yeah. So that was my number. Was that my number three? So, so. Are we on your number two? Um, I've got three left. I think. Have you got three left? No. Okay. Yeah. My mistake. My mistake. Go ahead. I think it's because you had. We yeah. Shared done, one, yeah. So. We've done one, haven't we? Yeah. So we're partners, but only for now. After we bust those tech thieves, it's payback time for kidnapping my wife. <clears throat> Jeez. <clears throat> one little mistake. We said we're sorry. Yeah. Whatever. Now, the imposter was a shapeshifter. So that means it was either Mysterio or the Chameleon. Hey, Chameleon was our idea. What do you thought of that? Tell me this, Einstein. Who could have wanted to steal Octavius' technology? Oh, oh, we know, we know! Who? The Submariner. The Submariner? Get serious, will you? The Mighty Thor! Are you out of your mind? Don't answer that. Uh, Galactus! Forget it, Eddie. I need Jameson's help on this. We're going to the Bugle. <sighs> Jameson! We hate Jameson! Bonehead. We're not going to see Jameson. We're going to use his computer database. Ooh, are we going to surf the web? Let's just go, okay? So, my third choice is 13. 13, okay. As in the XIII. Roman, Roman numerals. numerals. Yeah. Which is based on a Belgian comic, I believe. Okay. Um, never read it. How did you ro- learn your Roman numerals, may I ask? I've always been quite good with Roman numerals. Yeah? I don't remember why. I learned them from all the WrestleManias. Ah, of course. <laughs> That's how I learned them. Because <laughs> I'm a loser. <laughs> of course. So, it's a first-person shooter. Um, if you sort of picture Goldeneye, I guess, yeah. it's cell-shaded. It is, yeah. And it's probably my earliest and closest experience to comic books without having read comic books. Okay. Because it's a it really goes all in on the comic book feel of yeah. the game. So you'll be sort of playing the game normally and you'll have a weapon like a crossbow or mm. a knife and you kill someone with it and in, instead of just seeing the person die yeah, from from, a, from, from, from afar, afar, yeah. These comic book panels would pop up on your screen and you would see the dagger go in like step by step so there'd be three panels one of it just coming in one of it going through and then one of it coming out the head the other side and it just it just did it so well and it was such the the gameplay again wasn't that great no but it was your standard kind of first person shooter yeah but with with a nice little twist Mm. that embraced the 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 theme of the comic books Mm. where obviously yeah it originated from um, you play um, a guy who wakes up with an amnesia. Yeah, of course, as you do. He's voiced by David Duchovny. Who was it? It was. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know that. The, the, well, the, he doesn't say much. I don't remember. No, he's not got that many lines, and that's no. probably a good thing. Cause but he's, I mean, I David didn't think he was that great. Maybe not. Maybe he's he's kind of a bit of a sleepy actor, isn't he? He's kind yeah. of kind of almost sleepwalks his way through his roles. And this, and that's fine if that's your thing, yeah. you know. And and you know, he's he's known for his conspiracies, and this is a yeah. a big one. So it, it's a very fun game. It's not brilliant, but. I just love the comic as- comic aspect of it. Yeah, the it. aesthetic of the comic. And there's one brilliant mechanic in it that a lot of games do nowadays is sort of, you know how you can have the sort of spider sense of seeing someone through a wall. Yeah, yeah. And you see their outline. Yeah, or you know, d- detective like mode. Detective mode. Yeah. It does that 
but a lot simpler. There's this thing where if someone, if you're in a room and there's someone in a corridor next to you mm. and they're walking along, it would come, the words tap, tap, tap. Yes, come up I remember where that. Their feet yeah. are walking. And that was such a brilliant little bit of design in the game. So good. Where that's, if you were reading it as a comic, mm. that's what would, that's what you would see in yeah. the comic. Yeah. You'd see the word tap, yeah. tap. So obviously, because you can't hear anything when you're reading a comic. No. They need to show that somewhere, mm. somehow, that there's someone walking on the other side of the room. Mm. I and totally forgot about that. It actually, was yeah. so good. And there's things like if you shoot someone, like the word bam would come up yeah. above their head where the, Mm. Where the shot goes in, and you'd have like a if throw a knife at someone's head, you'd have a yeah. something like that. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, it was just a very fun comic book game, and I, I've mainly picked it because it's it's the most close. It, it keeps to the comic yeah. book aesthetic mm. as best as a video game can. Yeah, can. I and think it, I think you're right. Yeah, it is actually be there was a re well not a remake. Well, mm. I think yeah, a remake. It was yeah. supposed to come out in November. Really? Okay. But it's been delayed until some point this year. Yeah. But yeah, I'm quite looking forward to it. Cause That'd be good, yeah. The gameplay wasn't great. It was a very fairly standard shooter. Yeah. But I think if they can fix that and keep all of these brilliant yeah. little ideas in there, I, th- I think it'll be a great game. I mean, I mean I, I'm pretty sure I played it to completion as well. Um, I think my mum's boyfriend had it and I just played it and played it and played it. And yeah, I think it was kind of a standard kind of, there was a bit of stealth element. There was, you know, there was throwing of, you can kind of make shift weapons. You get like a bottle, you could throw yeah, that. Pick up chairs. Yeah, and... pick up chairs, throw that, use that. Um, and again, like the sound effect, you made me forget. It's like the sound effects were brilliant, but even like, even when you would move from scene to scene, you would, you would like almost walk through your panel, like yeah. walk, walking through into the next panel. Yeah. You know, which is an incredible bit of kind of, I mean, they do it in comics quite a lot, like, um, she holds was very known for like when she needed to go to a next scene she would tear herself through the page yeah. and like break and smash down a panel wall things like that and I think I think that like when I'm thinking like a comic book you know I, when I think about a comic book applied to film I go Spider-Man Spider-Verse into the Spider-Verse like you know all the little sound effects all mm. the little bubble the the ink dots all that sort of stuff like that is a comic book to me but like when I say when I think about it in video game form I think you're right I think 13 captures everything I would imagine to see in a comic book and, and it, it kind of immerses you in that comic book world mm. in, in such a way. But like and the rules that they have and the and the way they show things is is yeah, really, really interesting. But yeah, yeah I remember really enjoying the game. I like the it's like one of those seventies political thrillers with like yeah. um it's kind of with like the president's been yeah, murdered. And, it's like a Manchurian yeah. candidate type yeah. thing, sleeper assassins and it was really, really interesting. Very, very old school kind of um yeah, you know, very standard kind of that kind of story. Um, but the cell shading aspect, you know, it, it can cell shading can really work and it can really not work. Yeah, um, that style, but it, it really fit the the aesthetic that you were talking about. So yeah, yeah. really, really good choice. And, I think uh, yeah. Adam West is a voice in it as well. Shit, yeah, you're it's right. Like some general. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, cigar smoke in general. And he's—I so. think he's a real dick in it, isn't he? He's like a proper arse. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah, very unlike Adam West. Yeah, mm, interesting. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to move on to mine very quickly. So I think I'm on my number two now. Would that be right? Yeah, We've got two so, left. Yeah. yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. So mine is The Punisher from 2005. This is the one, oh yeah, I thought. This yeah, you. I remember you playing this game. Oh my god, I love this game so much. The The Punisher was like The Punisher game was written by Garth Ennis, who is my favorite Punisher writer. He is um, a guy who's written. Uh, he was the creator of The Boys, which is on Amazon, the new oh, yeah. kind of series. He's, he's got this dark, sick sense of humor that really fits with The Punisher and his and his view of the world, his kind of bleak view of the world. He kind of sees The Punisher as he's a serial killer who just so you know has happened to have targeted criminals. Anyone commits a crime, mm. you, you're going to die. You're going to die, small or as you know big as the crime is. Um, you've hurt someone, you're dead. And and usually the um, his characters that he introduces into the books. A real, like, I'm not a vengeful person. I'm not like a like a horrific person. But if you if you've been a fucking horrible guy and you deserve to die, and I believe that the Punisher is definitely coming for you. You know he's coming for you. Uh, and this game is kind of a, it's a bit like um, Ultimate Destruction in a way. It's kind of a pseudo sequel 
sequel to the original Thomas Jane film. Oh, yeah. So, so it's the villain Jigsaw is actually one of the characters. In the comic, he's not related to any of the characters from the film, but in the film, he's one of the sons that survives the killing. It's John Travolta's character is the main villain. It's one of his sons mm. that goes on to become Jigsaw. He survives the killing and he has this scarred face and goes on killing and wants revenge on the Punisher. So, so he carries on doing that. Thomas Jane actually reprises the role of the Punisher as well. So he voices the character, uh, uh, which was really good and really, and it, the design is very much like the comic. Um, yeah. he's this grim, you know, he doesn't look anything like Thomas Jane. They don't even no. try, but it's also a mix of Garth Ennis's writing. So a lot of his characters come back, like, uh, Mar Nucci, who's this like quadriplegic kind of mob boss. Um, you've got General Creed Cobb, who's one of my favorite lines was, I'm going to kill you and use you as a fucking condom. <laughs> you know, it's like lines like that, hilarious. Uh, a lot of the dialogue he just pulls from his comics. But it, it, there's a there's the the locales, the varying locales are really interesting. You've got a zoo, you've got a chop shop, you've got a, uh, a crack den, you've got um, you've got Stark Industries, mm. you've got all, a prison, you've got all these kind of unique areas which lead to some very unique kills um, and opportunities. So in the zoo, there's a bit where before I talk about unique kills, I've got to talk about the interrogation and torture mechanics. This is what I remember watching you. Play. So so yeah. what what you do is in certain parts of the game. You you can you need information from these characters so you can find like more weapons you can find like health you can find like ways to bypass certain enemies if it's going to be a tough challenge mm. um certain secret areas and bonuses and things so you have to interrogate you had four different ways of interrogating them on your person so you could like stamp on their head into the ground you can push a gun into their head you could choke them mm. and i think you can threaten them with a knife maybe or a headlock or something like that yeah. um but also there'd be environmental interrogation so, so in the chop shop, you've got this, you've got this uh, circular saw. So mm. you put them on the circular saw, and you're like, and you keep pushing them towards it. There's a little meter, and you've got to make sure that it doesn't doesn't go too far. Because if it goes too far, you will kill them, <laughs> yeah. um, and you won't get the information you want. You actually get minus points. So the, the game actually mm. punishes you from punishes you no. way way um, for killing the the guys that you're torturing. Yeah. So really, what you need to do is torture them to the point where they give up the information. Um, there's a little kind of bar, and if you keep it within the bar yeah. within a certain amount of time, um, which is quite difficult on some of them, um, some of the more interactive ones. If you do it yourself with one of your more personal interrogations, like the gun, pushing the gun into the head, you're more likely to do it. It's a yeah. bit easier. Um, but the but the interactive ones are so much more fun. I'm sure I remember seeing a wood chipper. At yes, point. there is a there is a wood chipper. Yeah. There's a there's, there's a zoo where you can put the you put them up against the cage or a rhino, uh, right. and the rhino starts running towards them, and you got to move her out of the way at the last minute. So or could could you punish punish them? Yeah. and get the information. Yes, and then kill them afterwards. You could, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're with the same torture method. Yeah, you can, but also you would get minus points. Oh, you would still okay. get the information, but you would get minus points. And yeah. also because it was so violent, they would have to turn it from uh, to black and white. Uh, so because any of the torture methods, they they were like, this is not going to go past the rating board. Yeah. So if you're doing that torture method, that will be too much. But even like the, you can, you know, you can stab that. Yeah. There's his like killing mode where he gets like ultimate punisher mode. It just gets these two Rambo knives out <laughs> and you start throwing them and like stabbing them. You can like you like you know stab them two in the head and everything. Yeah. It's like just imagine like Jason from Friday the Thirteenth, but you're the Punisher oh. and just going ape shit. One of my favorite kills was that you would grab if you had if you had a hold of them, you could do certain things. Like you can grab them and you can ram a grenade into their mouth, oh, break through their teeth. You can see the teeth coming out, and then they would run around like <laughs> <laughs> they'd run into all the other guys, and then they would explode. Oh, amazing! And it was brilliant. It was chock full of of cameos as well. You've got Matt Murdock comes to be your lawyer, and you. You tell him to fuck off. Um, so, so he's like, "Oh, okay, I'll just leave." Um, you've got uh, Nick Fury turns up when you're invading this kind of um, military compound. Uh, Black Widow is there. You've got uh, a cameo by Iron Man who says, yeah. "After you destroy Stark Industries," he goes, "Yeah, I need a drink." Uh, <laughs> oh, Tony. Um, I'm, what's he like? What's he like? Oh, alcoholism. Isn't it funny? Um, but yeah, there's some great, some great, great moments. I think, I think at the end, like Jigsaw has like an Iron Man armor. He's created like an Iron Man armor. There's, there's a few other characters I can't, can't remember off the top of my head. Bushwhacker. You, you won't know who Bushwhacker no. is. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a guy who has a cybernetic arm and, um, and it, which turns into a gun. Um, and he's also a racist and a former priest. Comic books. My kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a really good game. It's well written. It's funny. It's darkly humorous. 
Um, the gameplay, it, it reminds me a lot of the Deadpool game. The humour, the black humour is on point. The, the writing's on point. There's lots of references to the comic. Um, there's a really good bit where in certain points where you're torturing someone, you they'll say like, I've got a family, 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 family. And you'll have a flashback to when your family died. Yeah. Or like, or like, don't kill me, man, 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 man. And you'll see a flashback to Vietnam. And yeah. loads of other kind of cool stuff like that. You can collect comic book covers. Just a lot of fun. And it's just... It's just, I mean, again, the, maybe the controls and the, the, I don't think it ran very well. I think it was very yeah. slow at running. But again, when you're carrying like M60 machine guns, one of my favorite moments in the whole thing is you're in a funeral parlor for a mobster that's just died, but it's you in the casket. You kick open the casket, you've got an M60, and you're just mowing down all the mobsters <laughs> at the funeral. It is fantastic. Oh, so much, so much fun. Um, highly recommend it. Again, PS2, Xbox. Um, I bought it. I bought it again because it was so good. I was like, yeah. I just remember having so much fun with that game. But yeah, give it, give it a go because it is. It's a lot of fun. If you like, if you like extreme ultra violence, this is the one for you. But uh, that is, yeah, that's my choice. That's my number two. Very good. Um, so my penultimate choice: Ooh. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES Ooh. or NES, as Ooh. we used to say. Back we did in say that. I think I think um, I think American says NES, don't they? Yeah. S C N E S. Yeah, so NES and SNES. Yeah, for, for the UK. Yeah, yeah, that's what we used to call it. Um, this it's one of the earliest games I remember playing a lot of. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's quite well known for being a hard game. There's yeah. one level in particular, the dam level. Okay, which is. It, it's very hard mm. and it's very annoying. So you've got to swim through water and you've got to disarm about five or six bombs okay. that have been put there by the foot clan or mm. whoever it is. And there's this sort of electric seaweed that if you get too close to I it... I think I've seen this. I've not played it, but I think I've seen it. It makes the most irritating sound. It goes... <laughs> every time you touch it and it, you lose quite a lot of health. Yeah. And the problem with that is when you lose a lot of health, when you get to about a quarter of your health, Another noise goes off to warn you that oh, you've got God. low health, which is <laughs> so when you're not doing very well in this level, you've got two constant noises freaking you out, <laughs> and it's the most annoying level ever. But I mean, this is this is your second this is, game. <laughs> yeah, this is like your top two. This it, it takes me back to my childhood. Okay, it's such. And it's a very old game. It's on the NES, and it reminds me of what it was to be a kid loving the turtles. Yeah, and they were the, one of the things I really loved when I was younger. I've mm. not, I've grown out of it. And yeah. I haven't, I haven't been into the turtles for years. Yeah, but I absolutely loved this game, and I would play it over and over and over mm. again. I think if I played it now, I probably would struggle because it is a hard game. Yeah, it's sort of a side scroller. You, you're facing a lot of random enemies. Hmm. You can you can pick between which turtle you are at cool. any one point. I mean, the only diff- the only difference is a headband, really. <laughs> exactly, but but you've got there each individual weapons. Okay, so yeah. Donatello was always the best because his weapon could kill a lot of people in one go. Okay, whereas Leonardo, his would it, it was a bit weird when you'd enter a level. Hmm. It, there would be different characters sometimes. So sometimes if you entered the level, it would be sort of flame-based characters. And another time it would be um, sort of bug-based. Okay. So it, it was a very weird game to sort of understand. Hmm. But you, you would just play through it because, you, you know, oh, I was a kid, I didn't really know what was going on. Hmm. But it was things like, you know, Leonardo's sword or Psy, I think. It, I think no, um, I think Raphael is the Psy. Uh, he's got the katana, katana doesn't he? Yeah. Cool, of course. So he would have the katana, and that wouldn't always be as good as Donatello's bow, which yeah, I could never think, understand. Yeah, that seems weird. But it was just one of those games you play when you when you're younger, and you just absolutely love. Yeah. And back in those days, we would only like ever get one game every yeah. six months. Or yeah, something exactly. Like, yeah. Christmas or a birthday. Yeah. And so you just end up playing the same game again and the same again. level over and over and, and over. It, it was it was quite a long game, and you know you could get extra health by eating pizza. Of course, you'd find yeah. in the level. I mean, I just get extra fat. That's yeah. that's my problem. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it starts off 
sort of very simple. They're, they're sort of an overworld, like a map that you're walking around as mm. well. And then you sort of go into sewers and then that would become the side-scrolling aspect of the mm. game. So you had to figure out what to do in this big map to start with. It, it was quite weird to understand because I remember there was this one point that you couldn't get past if you if you hadn't picked up an item, which was... Um, sort of a hook shot kind of thing. Okay. Because you had to jump across two... Oh, like a grapple or something. Yeah, like yeah. a grapple hook. Yeah. You had to jump across two um, buildings. And it, this was the days before sort of YouTube and the internet where you yeah, could you just type know. in, oh, yeah. what do I do in this part of the game? Exactly, so I'm yeah. stuck. So I think it was a, a good like six months until I realised that Oh, when we actually picked up this thing, we could actually now throw this grapple hook. Wow. And walk across okay. it. So until then, we'd never really finished the game. We yeah. always played the begin bit, yeah. begin bit over and over. And so that also a weapon as a way of, and a way no, of No, you could only use it in this one bit and you, you could only pick it up in one level that okay. you didn't have to play. So it's sort of like the, there's quite a lot yeah. of side missions, not side missions, but areas you to go choose. Into. Yeah, there's a choice way. Yeah, because yeah, in the overworld, you're sort of choosing to go into this sewer, right, another sewer, okay. or a house. Right. And again, this is probably a nostalgia pick out of anything. Yeah. It's the first comic book based game, game I played. played. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was fun, but that damn level. Yeah, <laughs> that damn yeah. level. <laughs> so, if you've ever played the game, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm sure. But, I'm sure. I've yeah. I've not played that one. I, I think I played a lot of the side-scrolling beat 'em ups turtle games. Yeah. So uh, well, I was thinking of putting them in. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. I think. I, I've, I yeah, again, I couldn't fun. like button down which one was the best, or yeah, because I, I haven't really played them all. Um, but that, that, I remember them being quite fun. But I actually read a uh, Ghostbusters. Crossing over with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles recently, yeah. and it was really good. It was oh. A lot of fun, like a lot of kind of you know play playing on the both franchises and stuff. It's, I recommend the comic if you get a chance. Yeah. It's only about four issues, so it's about oh, hundred okay. pages or so. So it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah. I know they've done a sequel as well to it as well, but I'd recommend it. It's fun. Yeah. But yeah, so that was a good choice. No, I like that one. I think um, again, mine aren't. My tend to be kind of around my kind of teenage years. I think a lot of yeah. them. A lot of the the ones I consider really good. My final one. It's Spider Man and the Secret balls it's got to be a spider-man game mm -hmm. so you went with spider-man 2 which i think is a good choice but yeah. i didn't want to go with that there's been a lot of good spider-man games i think the most recent one is the best the ps4 version mm. is simply the best spider-man game there is hands down great writing great story great options great costumes great combat great tech great swinging mechanics you name it it's all there mm. highly recommend it go out if you want to be spider-man that is the game there's a few of the Spider-Man games I quite liked. I, I didn't, I never really played Web of Shadows that much. I know that was supposed to be quite a good mm. one with the kind of choice related. You can be evil and good, symbiote and stuff. The amazing Spider-Man game, the first one based on the, the, uh, the game, but the film, oh, but with Garfield. Andrew Garfield yeah. was actually pretty good. I've heard the second one wasn't so great, so I didn't go for that. Mm. That was another open world one. Um, but it had its elements, which, which I quite liked. Um, this, what, the one I almost picked was Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. That's what I thought you were going to pick. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. A, it, like, it's not open world, but the diversity between playing as four different Spider-Man for four different yeah. universes was really fascinating. To play as Spider-Man 2099, you had this kind of diving, um, this diving kind of freefall, um, mm. portion. Symbiote Spider-Man, you had all the symbiote powers. And stealth. There was a Spider-Man Noir That's from one, yeah, he, so he was in the four thirties, forties kind of thing, and he would sneak around and do lots of. It was a stealth mission, mm -hmm. but it, it was stealth I could actually do. It wasn't like Splinter Cell or something like <laughs> that. So, um, and then there was like a, it was like the Neil Patrick Harris Amazing Spider-Man, yeah. which was really good. And they picked like previous voice actors that played them. Yeah, but we're not going to. I'm not going to talk okay, about that one. Right. I'm not doing that one. No. but that is a good one. So go mm -hmm. go check that one out. I'm doing Spider-Man on the PS1. Ah. So this is going way back. So we're going PS1. Um, this is not technically based on the animated series. However, mm. it does have a lot of links to it and, and it has the feel of it. And a lot of the several actors return to play their role. So Dr. Octopus, uh, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. Um, yeah. Say that three times fast. <laughs> um, he played uh, Alfred in Batman the Animated Series as well. And he played a very Germanic Dr. Octopus. Um, and he returns to play Dr. Octopus. And Rina Romano, who played Spider-Man in the Spider-Man Unlimited Animated Series, he plays in this but this game was the first time I really felt like Spider-Man yeah. like, again like I said about earlier it gave you the illusion of a, a free roaming world 
Um, it had lots of little Easter eggs. So first level, you can see the Fantastic Fours Baxter mm-hmm. Building or the Freedom Fours Plaza, whichever one's your preference. It's got Stanley narration, so it made me feel yeah. like I was watching Spider-Man: The Amazing Friends again. Um, lots of cameos by the Punisher, Captain America, Daredevil. Daredevil even says, "Are you evil?" No, I believe you because I can read your heartbeat. Bye. You know, <laughs> they come in and come come and go. You've got all the classic villain Scorpion. You have to save Joey Jonah Jameson from the Scorpion, which is amazing. Lots yeah. of fun. The lizard turns up for five minutes when you're in a maze and he's like go this way this is the way out you know uh, Venom is absolutely hilarious in this the writing of Venom is brilliant I don't um, remember Venom in that yeah Venom, Venom plays a big role uh, kidnaps Mary Jane you've got Mysterio and you get like original elements as well so you get Carnage mixing with Doctor Octopus and becoming the final boss where you're running out of this underwater base yeah. not unlike some classic kind of uh, Spider-Man stories like the Master Planner saga and you've got to escape before the nuclear bomb goes off and you've got to save him at the same time um, again multiple costumes again collectible stuff comics and stuff and it got me more invested in the Marvel Universe in the whole as well stuff I'd never seen before you can see you play this What If mode which is a famous comic book series um, and it's definitely one of the best I've ever played. Again, the swinging mechanics weren't great. The combat was all right. The combat was pretty good. Um, but it was very, very cheesy, very over the top. But I loved it. I thought it was a great, great game. Yeah. Um, got not much more to say about it, but it was, it was the basis for most of the Spider-Man games. You don't get Spider-Man PS1. Mm. You don't get, you know, Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Definitely, 100%. Yeah. But that is all I have to say about that one. What is your last one, Scott? My last one. I think I know. I think I might know. This is Batman. Okay. Arkham Ooh. Asylum. Oh, okay. I've gone with the first one from the series. Okay. So there's, uh, I think Arkham City, widely regarded as the better game. I think so. Again, open world. Yeah. Yeah. But I prefer Asylum. Okay. I think obviously it's the first, the first one in the series, mm. and it was just when it was released, it was mm. so. This was back in a time when we were saying mm. before video games based on comics, based on films, yeah. weren't that great. Yeah, this just blew absolutely everyone out of the water. It did. It was fantastic. So it starts off uh, with the story. You've just kidnapped the Joker, or you've just got yeah, the Joker, you captured, you captured him, yeah. him the, yeah, the yeah. Joker. So it's it's sort of like already started on. You feel yeah. like, oh wow, something I've missed, made, something, I've yeah. missed an episode or a yeah. film or a, or a comic book serial or whatever. And you're taking him to Arkham Asylum, and Batman's got this weird feeling that something's not right. So mm-hmm. he walks with the Joker whilst the Joker is strapped in this sort of almost upright bed, mm. and he is just constantly taunting you throughout mm. the whole thing. And then when you walk in through this long corridor. You see little bits of, uh, like, you see a little bit of Killer Croc. Yeah, yeah. You see all these other villains. Mr. Zaz. And, yeah. and you just think, oh, my God, this is going to be incredible. Mm-hmm. And obviously, everything goes to pan. The Joker planned to be caught. I yes. Yeah. That was all part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the gameplay in this game is incredible. The fighting. The it's gadgets. Of, the gadgets. The gadgets. Yeah. There's a lot of just... A lot of it is just punching the, yeah. you know, hitting the punch button over and over yeah. again while you're pounding a load of goons. But it's that combo, it's, it's that combo chain as well because you yeah. get a real combo chain. So going. yeah, every time you hit someone, you get an extra mm. times one or whatever. and you get like a gadget or you can yeah. yeah. If, if you miss a hit, then your combo meter goes. Yeah. But uh, and you sort of you, you're upgrading your abilities and you're fighting things. So you, there's some enemies earlier on in the game that you struggle with, but then you get an extra ability that will easily take them out later on. But it's just... It, the finesse in this game is incredible. The little... My favourite point of the game is later on when you realise your cape has got tears in it. Yeah. And it's because you've been on this one long night and obviously he's going through a lot. And just to see little holes in the cape, which was obviously happen. Mm. It's little thing, little touches like that that I think are just absolutely incredible, mm. and it's sort of like a, vet, a Metroidvania type of game. Yeah, it's where, kind of like a like a, a, a kind of a dungeon crawler, I guess you would yeah, call it. Yeah, so so you sort of go, go, you see various parts of the game, and there's things that you can't figure out right now because you don't have the certain abilities. Yeah. Or can't you open this door. Got a certain yeah. weapon. And then you get those later in the game and you come back to these old places and they kind of change. There's other enemies. Mm. 
and you can you reminds can me of um, can... I think the the one it reminds me of most is Metal Gear Solid because it's the yeah. same it's the exact same map but you revisit it yeah. over and over That's, for different yeah. things. Yeah, it reminds me of that a lot, and I I think in some ways I do prefer it to Arkham City because of that. Yeah, it, it's just a lot neater than Arkham City. I think Arkham City is just a bit too big for me, and the, the sort of Riddler trophies. Oh, you love that shit. I love all you that, love that sort shit. of stuff. I'm, I'm not a massive fan, but oh, <laughs> that's for just you. figuring out lots of like the first rid- one of the first Riddler trophies, or the most common one, mm. is that the Riddler's po- uh, painted a massive Q- uh, question mark yeah. in green ultraviolet mm. paint. Mm. And until you real the first time you realise, oh, I'm supposed to match that up. I've got mm. to find the dot at the bottom of the question mark and match it up. Mm. And oh, it was just absolutely amazing. And the, the scarecrow. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah. When you're hallucinating, yeah, the fear so gas. You, yeah. you get poisoned at one point, and then you start seeing things, and then it opens up into this massive, almost like a platformer kind of yeah, part yeah, of the yeah, game where it? you have yeah. to reach um, the bat signal and then mm. point it at the scarecrow, who's this massive. I, like I really like that hundred foot version of scarecrow. Mm. It it's an absolutely incredible game. It is. And I think a lot of people would agree with you. I think, yeah. I, I honestly think that that's, again, the reason I didn't pick it, because I think you'd have it, it, is, I think it is the pinnacle. That series of games, no matter how you feel about them, is the pinnacle of superhero games. Yeah. You know, a lot of people compare, you know, a lot of people steal from it. There's a lot of uh, games I'm going to mention. Um, I've got a few honorable mentions, but I think, yeah. I think that was a great list, Scott. Um, ha- very happy with your choices. I'm sure a lot of people would agree with you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully somebody will delve into my more obscure ones. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but I'm going to mention my honorable mentions. Um, I'm going to go with the ones I've not already mentioned. So Captain America and the Avengers on the SNES. It was a sc- side-scrolling comic book beat-em-up. No, I never played that one. No, it was a kind of an old-school one for characters and what have you. Uh, Wolverine X-Men Origins, which was brilliant and much better than the bloody film Jesus yeah. <laughs> uh, X-Men Children of the Atom which was the first kind of Capcom beat em up that they mm-hmm. did and then that yeah. became Marvel vs. Capcom after time I was, I was gonna, that's in my honourable mention oh Marvel good good Capcom, so. uh, Injustice Gods Among Us which mm. is uh, that's almost perfect beat em up story that was very mix. fun uh, and I'm going to include a, a weird one but um, Transformers War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron because Marvel actually came up with a lot of the backstories and names for most of the Transformers so technically it's it's a comic book game mm. but any of yours? Um, X-Men Arcade nice very good that was very very fun especially with four players I think we, we went on one of my yes, birthdays yeah, to we went to like, arcade uh, Bur- the Berry Arcade Berry, yeah uh, Berry Arcade we played that a little bit that, that was, was very good. fun um, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom good yeah. does that mm-hmm. that was very although I've never been into beat em ups but that was, that was very one of your fun. faves and Arkham VR is my last one okay Nice. That is the game that would make anyone feel like a superhero. Nice. And it's purely because there's a part in it where you, obviously you've got the, the headset, the headset on, VR headset. And yeah. there's a part where you put your, your, your gloves on mm. and then you have to grab the cowl yeah. and put it on your head. And there's a, a mirror in front of you mm. and you are Batman. Yeah. And there's, that's what I love about VR. Yeah. It's, it, there's, it's just the pinnacle of gaming for me. And I think it's only going to get better. I but, think I agree. I hundred yeah. percent agree, and I, I like a bit of VR myself. But I've only tasted it with you and on your PlayStation. Yeah. We do have a couple of listener comments oh, I'd like to good. mention as well. So uh, my biggest fan, I am Jack's Musings at I am Jack's Musings Hello. has said Hello, Jack. Uh, he said I've never been a big fan of uh, I've never been a big games. I've never been a big games. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm fond uh, of I have fond memories of Batman eighty nine from the Amiga. Showing oh, wow. showing your age showing your age, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Turning corners by using the grappling hook and figure out the ingredients in the Joker's laughing gas. And he's put a smiling Batman gif on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Ben's Ben at Nerds Chatting at the at Nerds Chatting podcast or at Ben underscore Nerd Chat. He said, "Here's my top five: Telltale's Walking Dead, yes, yes. Arkham Origins, Batman, Arkham Knight, Batman." Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City. That's yeah. diverse. Yeah, that's what I said to him as well. Um, um, but that is but that is they, it. They are they are very they are good games. amazing games. So that is it for yeah. us. So I'm going to end it there. You can find us on the social medias. So it's uh, Facebook. It's at Secret Balls. Twitter. It's Dan underscore Balls. Uh, Instagram. It's Spider Dan Secret Balls. All one word. The podcast is available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, many many more. And don't forget to use the hashtag Prepare for Prattle. Can we find you on any social medias, Scott? Uh, uh, probably. Probably. I, and I can't even remember what my things are. <laughs> I 
really no use pressure. Them that much. No pressure. S- Scott Hodge. I'll, ta- I'll, on I'll, I'll tag you. I'll yeah, tag you in shit. Don't worry. Cheers. I'll find you. I'll do the hard work. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.